Welcome to a video production of EE224 Signals and Systems 1 with your instructor, Professor Julie A. Dickerson of Iowa State University. Hello and welcome to the first video on communications analysis using Fourier transforms. The first introductory video will cover the topic of modulation for communication. The purpose of communication systems are to be able to move a message signal. By that I mean an audio signal, a video signal from one location to another. Something as simple as reading an audio file from your smartphone and playing it on your headphones would be an example. Other cases would be data such as television signals that are transmitted via antennas or via cable, and digital signals like the data that you consume on your smartphones. Now, when we have a message signal, the, what we do to transmit it is to change some aspect of a carrier wave. This is called modulation. The kinds of things that we will be changing will be amplitude, frequency, and phase of the signal. And then the other part of the communication system is what's called demodulation, where we are taking that message signal and decoding it for reception and use at the other end. Some examples of communication modulation systems that are commonly in use are first the analog communication systems where you have a basic signal that changes the amplitude or aspects of the angle such as the frequency or phase of the signal. Examples include AM or amplitude modulation, such as the AM radio that you have on your car. And in this case, the message is transmitted by changing the amplitude of the cosine carrier. Now, in the other case is angle modulation. This is where you will change possibly the frequency with respect to the signal or its phase. Then we have digital communication systems where the data is set in a sense um, in a set of symbols where each pulse denotes a symbol which has some meaning on the other end. So during every pulse width, so the advantages of using modulation is that what it does is shift the spectral content from the operating band of the system to a band where it can be easily transmitted over a distance. And so one example of that is if you think about your voice. When you're talking to someone and they're close, they can easily hear you. But the range of your voice is certainly limited, that you know, perhaps you could communicate over a few hundred yards. When you shift the voice to another frequency band, you can usually increase the range of communication from several hundred yards to several miles or hundreds of miles very easily. Also, by shifting a signal to a different band, you can have some protection against noise in the existing bandwidth. And again, you can think about this if you're having a conversation and there's people next to you having another conversation. That means you're all speaking in the same frequency band of the human voice. Now, if you move your voice up to, let's say, 20 or 30 kHz, for instance, then it will not be interfered with by somebody else who's talking. It also permits something called multiplexing. This is a way of sharing the bandwidth or sharing the spaces on the bandwidth between multiple signals. This allows 
people to have an ever increasing number of wireless devices and have them all communicate without interfering with each other. The last advantage of modulation is it allows the creation of smaller devices. So as you go usually to higher frequencies, you can transmit with smaller antennas and have smaller receivers in the devices. So starting off in amplitude modulation systems. In this example, our message signal will just be a simple sinusoid. And what we will do with the amplitude modulation is multiply the sinusoid of our message by a higher frequency carrier signal. The effect is to have the envelope of the signal which is defined by the message with the carrier inside. And you can see how the amplitude of the carrier is changing over time. The next two types of signals are phase and frequency modulation. So we can take what we called the generalized phase angle that we saw in the chirp lab, and we can encode different parts of this signal to convey information. Now in these types of signals, we're going to hold the amplitude of the signal constant and vary the phase according to our message. So in the first example, in what's called phase modulation, we keep our communication frequency or our carrier frequency constant and we change the phase of the signal with respect to the message that we would like to send. So using the same message and carrier signal as before, a phase modulated signal might take this form, where we see that the phase shift is changing with respect to the message signal. And then we have frequency modulation, which is related to the instantaneous frequency that we looked at with the chirp signal. So if you remember, we took our generalized phase and took a time derivative. So if we look at a cosine and think about the frequency and we take its derivative with respect to time, in a frequency modulation system, what we are doing then is integrating the frequency over time. So an FM or frequency modulation signal has the form of the carrier, plus we are actively changing the frequency as the message changes by doing a running integral. So this type of signal takes this form. Same message, same carrier. Again, notice that the amplitude stays constant all the way through, but what changes is the frequency of the modulated signal, or the signal that we are transmitting changes as the message signal changes. And then finally, there's the pulse modulation case that is often used in digital communication. And there's many things you can change with a pulse. You can change its amplitude, its duration. That's called pulse width modulation. Uh, you could use its position within a pulse period as well. And so different pulses will represent different symbols. These, a string of these symbols is known as a code word. And you can use these code words to help you get rid of digital errors. So one example of these schemes is known as pulse code modulation, where we have a way of encoding the information and then we encode it either for security or for better transmission or usually for both. So the example on the next page is an example of pulse amplitude modulation, or PAM, type of signals. 
So with a pulse amplitude modulation system, you have a pulse train, in this case, just a square wave. We have our modulating signal, and our PAM signal is the each pulse multiplied by the input pulse train. You can send your message that way, and your receiver will look at the amplitude of each pulse to decode your message. Oh, another example of a digital system is something called frequency shift keying, where you can send a 1 by sending one frequency and a 0 by sending something at a second frequency. And the receiver needs to pick up which frequency is being sent at which time. So here's an example of this. We have our waveform for a 0, our waveform for a 1, and you can use it to encode a simple digital message. And then in the decoder, what you would have to do is figure out which frequency was sent at which time. So in summary, communication systems convey information in both analog and digital form by modulating all the parameters of a carrier wave, which is usually modeled as a sinusoid. And so this information is conveyed by amplitude, frequency, and phase, or combinations of all three to be as efficient as possible. So we will use our signals and systems tools to analyze communications waveforms. In the next section, we will talk about how to analyze amplitude modulation systems. Thank you for listening. Divide instead of multiply, can you do it too?